So yesterday I posted a video on the Growa Infinity 2000 and I ran into a lot of problems with the hardware and the software, but I made a critical error and I misrepresented the product because I messed up how you can change the charging speed. I couldn't get it to work until the very end and I don't want to get sued. So I took the video down but this product is still for sale online. I told them that they should not sell this with the problems that it has. It actually has safety issues. Then one of my viewers said, with all due respect, this seems like you were folding to a request to take the video down. You could simply edit that part of the video. And I don't think they saw the video because it's the whole video and I can't edit. And that just pissed me off. I said, nope, I'm not. I don't want to get sued. I did it. And it's the next day and this thing is still for sale with a known safety issue. So I'm going to list out everything that I dislike about this just so that you guys know, especially the safety issue. And for my viewers to think that I'm folding to a corporation, absolutely not. Now I made a list and I sent it to them last night of everything that they need to fix. So I'm going to show you what this list is. And then when I get this unit back in a few months and it's all fixed, we'll see what they changed and see if it's actually safe to use. Now the first issue issue that we need to cover is a hardware problem and I think they should fix this before they sell the units. This is also a safety issue. So there is XT60 connectors and this allows you to connect a solar array or even your 12 volt alternator charging system to the main unit so you can charge with either and it uses an XT60 connector. But this is the same connector as the charge port on the expansion battery, but this connects directly to the battery. There is no charge controller or charge regulation, which means if you have this connected to your car and if you accidentally plug it in over here, you could destroy something in your car's charging system. Or if you have solar connected and it's a high voltage and you're back feeding a battery without any form of charge regulation, you could destroy something in here. And this is such a simple mistake. Pretty much every electrical engineer knows that if you have different voltages or inputs or outputs, you want different plugs. So there's no chance that you're going to destroy something. And this voltage can range as high as 56 volts depending on state of charge. So let me show you. And right now we have 52.6 volts. Now what the company wants to do in the manual is they want a separate module to connect right here so you can charge it with solar and other things. But if you have a different module, you should have a different plug so that people cannot screw that up. Also anything over 50 volts DC is technically dangerous. It's enough to overcome the resistance of your skin and to let dangerous amounts of current flow. The chance of that actually killing someone is very low, but NEC still says that anything over 50 volts DC is dangerous. Next, they don't have this module on their website. They didn't tell me how much it's going to be and they're not sure when they're going to sell it. So again, if you have a port and you don't have a module that actually works for it yet and it's at a dangerous potential with the same plug as over here, that is just all bad. I don't know who your engineers are that thought this is a good idea, but I would fire them right now. And I would take this off of the shelves of the stores or off the internet. You need to fix this today. Back feeding a 12 volt system with 55 volts is not safe. So yeah, fix this. Next complaint is the quiet charge button. I don't think this should be called quiet charge. It should be called charge speed and there should be an indicator on the screen of how fast you're charging. And you could say quiet, slow, and fast charging. And I like buttons on the unit so you don't have to use the app. Now let's move on to the next problem, the app. The registration and connection is easy, but every time I click on it, it crashes. Because the app was crashing in my original video, I was unable to change the charge speed. But at the end of my video, I was able to use this button right here to change the charge speed, but I never got the advertised rate. I only got 1600 watts when it says it's gonna be doing 1800 watts. So that's another thing they need to change as well. Next, whenever I overload these units, it will go into this perpetual cycle of shutting itself off and then turning itself back on again, but that's when you exceed the bypass. I think there should be an indicator on the screen that should say bypass overload or inverter overload, 
with a different error code instead of just saying overload. Eventually it will give up and it will shut down, but the only way to turn it on and start charging again is to turn the inverter on and then turn it off real quick and then it will start charging. And that's bad software. And that should never happen on a product. So whoever's doing your software needs to be replaced. That's pathetic. So I said there should be a reset that's manual. So if it goes into overload, you turn it on and off again, boom, you're good to go. Next, the expansion battery connection. It uses this cable and when you connect these two units together, it will say two different time remainings on the screen. So if you're running a load with the system, you're gonna see, oh, 15 minutes over here and 40 minutes over here. No, that's not how you do it. You want a single number on the main unit telling you how long you can run that load for or how long it will take to charge all the batteries together. Together. Looking at multiple screens, like let's say you have two expansion batteries. Are you going to look at three different screens and try to calculate it? No, that doesn't make any sense. You should look at the main unit and say, hey, how long can I run this load? See one number and be done with it. Next, the accuracy needs to be better. On this unit, it sat at 15 minutes remaining for like five minutes. That's unacceptable. Next, if any of these units are bypassing power from the grid, I think it should show it on the screen. And I don't think anybody actually does this yet because the output of this device varies if you're in bypass or not. So if you're running just off the inverter, it's 2,200 watts max. But if you're in bypass, it's only 1,400 watts and some change. Now the next suggestions are not requirements, but I think they should add it first. There's only three AC outlets on the front. I think you should have six. Next, I think they should copy EcoFlow somehow and have a switch to select the charge rate over here or you can have it on the screen, but I like a physical switch. In my opinion, I don't think there should be anything that you can change in the app that you can't do on the screen because some people just don't wanna use a cell phone. It's nice to have the app functionality, but you should also have the option not to use it and to use good old fashioned physical buttons. Next, the input is lacking, just like the anchor and the EcoFlow. Let's get this up to 150 volts or higher. Use a different plug. The high solicit is at like 500 volts or 450. So yeah, let's step this up. 60 volts is just not that great anymore. Next, I think you should copy Anchor, one of your biggest competitors, and put gallium nitride transistors so the cooling fans will not come on as often. And the efficiency will also increase as well. That's a major selling point of the Anchor, and that's one of your biggest competitors right now. Also, maybe have some wheels like the Anchor and most of the other ones. I like the wheels. Um, these things are pretty heavy, and if you're older, it's nice to have some small wheels down here. And that's pretty much it. These devices are very simple, but they just need to work. You should only look at one screen and be able to change everything right here. And you need to remove this charge port. This is a major safety issue. So please do not do this ever again. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. I covered everything that they need to change and a little bit more. So let's see what happens. Let's see if they make any changes or they take this off of the market right now. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.